Hi, in this video, we're going to learn how we can get input from a user to control commands in our code. To write programs that give users the ability to interact with and control parts of our code, we can use the command input. To save the input that the user gave, we assign it to a variable. We type the name of our variable followed by an equal sign. Instead of entering a value for the variable ourselves, we use the command input followed by a set of parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we write the text prompt that we want the users to see inside quotation marks. In this code, we are asking the user to determine what color our circle should be. We've named the variable color choice and are asking the question, what color should the circle be? We are then using this variable's value to assign a color to Tracy before she draws the circle. Just a quick side note, we're using the variable name color choice instead of just color because color is a reserved word in Python, so it cannot be used as a variable name. Because there is already a command using the word color, we need to choose something else for our variable. When we run this code, the user will see the text prompt and will be able to type in an answer. The user's answer of green is given as an argument to the color command. Tracy then changes her color to green and draws the circle. If we try to use the input command to get a number from the user and use it as a number in our code, Tracy will give us an error. This is because Tracy reads everything a user enters as a word by default. It's very simple to change a user's input to be read as a number by using the command int. All we need to do is surround our entire input command by the term int and place parentheses around it. You'll notice two closed parentheses at the end of the phrase. This is because we open two parentheses throughout our phrase, so we need to make sure to close both of them or Tracy will respond with an error. In this code, we want the user to tell us what the radius of the circle should be, so we ask the question, what is the circle's radius, and surround it with both the input and int commands. You also may notice that we're changing the value of the user input in the forward command. We can alter user input just as we would a variable's value. The output of our code is a circle with a radius that was specified by the user. Tracy then moves forward the diameter of the circle. We may want to send a message to communicate back to the user. This may be a personalized note with their name or a confirmation of the information they entered, as seen here. To do this, we could print a message that includes the information they provided. To combine the pieces of information with our message, we could use concatenation, as we learned in the last few lessons. Or we can alter the message using the format method. Let's take a look at how this method works. First, we begin with a piece of information. This may be a variable we set, as shown here, or could be input a user has given. We then write a general message, and anywhere we want personalization or to use the value of a variable, we use a set of curly brackets with nothing inside them. Note that we do not have to use addition signs around this value, as we do when we use concatenation. This shortens our messages considerably and minimizes the places we may make a mistake. We then use the format method to combine the general message and the information we want to include. Remember, when we use methods, we use dot notation. So to use the format method, we first write the name of the message we want to format, then we call the method using dot format, and inside parentheses, we enter the variable name we want to include inside the message. The output of this program would then be, hello, Ava. If the name changed, nothing else about our program would need to be changed to update the output. This is very helpful if you will be printing the same message multiple times using different variables. But what if we wanted to include multiple pieces of information in the message? Is this possible with the format method? Yep. To include multiple pieces of information, we still enter curly brackets wherever we want the variable's information to go. And if we want to use multiple variables to fill in the information, we just enter each one in order inside the parentheses. We can also use the same variable multiple times in the message if we'd like by referencing it multiple times in the format method. In this lesson, we learned how to get input from a user and how to change input from a word to a number. Refer to the example we went through to help you collect user input to solve some Tracy challenges of your own.